Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Today I had the opportunity to speak to a really interesting guy. His name is Tom Eriks and he is the former VP of marketing for Facebook. And I'm sure you're wondering why I would be talking to a former VP of marketing from Facebook when this is a podcast all about pets. Well, Tom left the social media industry back in 2013 and recently has started a pet food company. Joy Foods builds vet-designed curated meals for your pet from fresh and wholesome ingredients. As with most pet food companies, um, especially the, the subscription services and the fresh food services that we're seeing pop up right now, this all came about because of issues that Tom saw with his own family. So uh, basically in 2018, one of his golden retrievers became really sick. He worked with his vet to change the dog's diet and saw a really quick correlation between the quality of food and his dog Cooper's quality of life. So I really wanted to talk to Tom. I think that's an interesting approach to nutrition. If you follow my podcast or follow my articles written on our sister site, Top Dog Tips, you know that proper nutrition, canine nutrition, digestive health is something that I'm really passionate about. And the reason for that is because so many pet parents don't realize how proper nutrition and digestive health affects your pet's overall health and well-being. Everything from immune support to their energy level to their quality of life. So many people don't realize that. They think as long as they're feeding a high quality food, you know, everything's good. But what they don't realize is that finding that right balance of nutrition, using whole food ingredients, not just a higher quality kibble, but a really top-notch nutrition plan for your dog or your cat, it can add years to their life. It can save you thousands of dollars in unnecessary vet bills. A lot of the issues that we see that are most common in pets stem from improper nutrition over long periods of time. And it's because people shop based on price only. It's because of false marketing. It's because uh, of pet owners that aren't educated about uh, the proper nutrition for their animals. There are lots of reasons for it. Uh, But really, you know, it does affect your dog's overall health and well-being. And and I'm not just talking about his physical health, but his emotional health too. So I loved Tom's idea um, of correlating the quality of food and the quality of life for your pet. So today I had the chance to talk to Tom. He had a lot of really great tips on proper nutrition. And he talks, of course, about his uh, new company, Joy Food, what sets them apart from other brands, um, and, and why he got into the pet food industry in the first place. So I spent most of my career in the, the digital media tech world. Um, and, you know, more from moved from kind of a television experience when I was return of broadcasting, and then moved into the digital world, uh, and then found myself in 2006 in this, you know, a really interesting company uh, called Facebook. At the time, <laughs> was was a really small was a really small company, and when I joined there, and one of the reasons I joined there, uh, one I I would never ever go back to something bigger, and it was such an interesting kind of segment of of the you know media content experience space because it was mostly focused on college kids and mostly focused then it backed into high school and a little bit outside of college so it started in 2000 February 2004 I joined there in 2006 and when I joined there it was it was just a little bit, bit more than 7 million users so it was really small and one of the real drivers for me um was I'd never done a startup. I'd never been involved in a, in a you know, a, a small company, even though it's hard to fathom Facebook at one stage being really small. I was number 102 employee. Uh, I worked out of my house for, for a bunch of months and uh, eventually start, started the, uh, the first New York office um, and then built out all the offices throughout the US. So we went from New York then into Chicago and Detroit 
Los Angeles. We obviously were based in, in uh, at the time, um, Palo Alto, downtown Palo Alto, uh, opened up an office in Toronto, um, eventually Dallas and Atlanta. And it was one of the, one of the, the greatest parts of that whole experience with, with, with the people. The people that I worked with were just so phenomenal. Um, everyone had an incredible sense of mutual respect for one another. Everyone had done other things, um, around the either tech or media or outside of, of both. Uh, and it joined this company because they really believed wholeheartedly in what Mark was building in the mission of connecting the world. And, uh, so I was, uh, really fortunate enough to be a part of that journey and, and have a, a hand in building, um, a really major part of the revenue business, which is the, uh, the U.S. slash North America. Um, so it was really, it was really fabulous, but everything gradu- uh, kind of gravitated around people. Uh, we never hired a ton of people on any given year. Uh, we always were really, really selective in, in who came into the company, um, because they had to believe in something that was, um, that was, you know, that was super powerful, but also have a sense of, um, putting themselves kind of secondary to the company. And that, that's a hard dynamic for a lot of people to kind of put their head around. Um, so, uh, spent seven years at, at Facebook, left in 2013, um, because a lot of the work I had done was, uh, was, you know, in many ways, uh, had been built and other pieces of, uh, the company that I love to do, which was building teams and building the business and the foundation of both, uh, was so, was so cemented and so set in place that it was, um, it was actually very much applauded and encouraged that when you were, ready to kind of move on and do other things like you spread your wings spread your wings and go do it and uh that's exactly what i did and uh eventually jumped into and, and kind of stumbled into um uh joy which uh which is where we are now and, and we're super excited about building absolutely and you know i love that you said just spread your wings and do it there are so many people that have really phenomenal ideas and a uh, bunch of different industries but um it's just sort of that that first leap that's really hard to take so um coming from somebody like you who had a job with a a great company a job that they loved um and something that was a a really great business um and then you know you took that leap and uh what tell us a little bit about the leap that you took and why you decided to jump into the pet industry i jumped into the pet industry uh kind of the the, you know when you when you're ever around like a, a Thanksgiving table, you always say like, tell us something about yourself that's, that's super interesting or people don't know about. And what, uh, what I love, I mean, dearly, I have, I have four kids and a wonderful wife, but what I love dearly are, are dogs. And I, we had two golden retrievers, um, and one had gotten ill, um, and had lymphoma. So, um, we'll try to cut the sh- uh, story a little bit shorter. Um, I'd gone to this uh, holistic oncologist in New Jersey, Dr. Kendra Pope, and um, it was the first time I'd ever taken one of our dogs to a vet. And usually they're really kind of, you know, all over the place, they're really stressed, they're panting. And this is the first time he w- we walked into this kind of wait- waiting room or, or uh, little area to uh, wait for the doctor. And he was calm as can be, and he was, it was almost like you're at this like, like spa environment. Um, and when Kendra Pope came in, we, you know, we, we caught up. She was, she had, uh, the diagnosis from, uh, Cornell, um, medical. So she was very up to speed with what was going on. And she talked a lot about the things that, that go on in, in, um, in a pet's life. And, you know, the three pillars, which are nutrition, environment, and genetics are kind of the three pillars that, that can impact, uh, dogs in, in a great way. And she talked about nutrition and she asked me, she goes, what are you feeding your dog? And I, and I always took great pride in the fact that we were feeding him what we thought was the best of the best. And she said, oh my God. She goes, you know, that's, it's a good, it's a good product. And it was, it was a, it was a kibble product and it was a high end kibble product. And she said, if you want me to really kind of break it down for you, Tom, you're just feeding him the best of the crap. And I was kind of taken back because for all these years that our dog was now nine and I'm like, oh my God, for nine years, I always thought we were feeding him so well and treating him so well. And when we left 
the office. Uh, she obviously gave us kind of really, uh, really awesome next steps, and she was was thinking about you know creating a prescription meal plan for him. But what she really stressed, she said, from this point forward, please, whatever you cook for dinner, just just give this to Cooper. Give the meal to to your dog. You, you said you eat really well. You love fresh fresh ingredients. Um, you take great pride in the family. You eat really well. So just give your dog that food and, until we get the prescription to you in a few weeks, and then we can get him on kind of the we can dial in on his nutrition uh, uh, more succinctly. So that was that was something that was uh, was super important um, to me, to me, and it gave us it gave me kind of uh, a chance to reflect back on our meeting, but also on the opportunity. So on the drive back from New Jersey, about a two-hour drive, I was thinking, like, this would be such an interesting uh, opportunity because I'd never really heard of this uh, this this kind of human-grade uh, food approach. And um, did a bunch of research on it and spent a number of weeks thinking about uh, and thinking about, you know, how could we, how could we kind of create a, an easier, you know, approach. We had, you know, another dog, we had a... Uh, that we uh, had, um, and we were thinking um, about whole foods and, and, and you know fresh ingredients. So, um, one of the validation pieces. I was in a meeting in New York City about four weeks after that, it was totally unrelated, and it was with a, uh, a financial company. And we kind of finished up the meeting and a little bit of small talk. We kind of went around the room, and people were saying, "Oh, like, what else are you? What else are you working on? What else are you focused on?" What else are you are you interested in? And there was one person who said, "I love the human grade dog food space." And I had already been, you know, four weeks into doing tons of research on this, and I didn't I didn't share with him anything I was working on. But it was it was fabulous validation that there is this whole push and potential with wellness that has never ever been uh, a part of a pet owner's life, and more importantly a dog life. So um, that was kind of the, the springboard into us uh, then putting the, the early building blocks of the business together. So tell us a little bit about Joy and what makes it stand out from other products. Yeah, so what, what we believe in is that we, we believe that we have such an amazing opportunity to, to bring wellness to every household. And, and obviously we're super, we're, we're super, super focused on, on dogs, but we believe that if we can bring the whole notion of wellness and the education around eating well and start to, start, start to, uh, um, drill into this, the one pillar of nutrition, just like, you know, humans have done for the last, say, 10 to 15 years, I think we collectively have just eaten better. We've thought about ingredients more intelligently and we wanted to bring that whole notion into the household, but have it focused on on the dog. And we believe if we did that, and we did that right, and we did it, you know, not just right, but did it great, that would actually bleed back into the household so people would see nutrition in a, in a very different way. And as we were building our product, we also wanted to make sure that wellness could be a part of every pet owner's life, and not just for those that could afford you know, a, a premium product. Um, so we're starting to diversify what we're doing. So it, we have a full meal replacement uh, product. We have a topper product. So for those that either maybe economically or are adverse to, sh- to shifting out of current habits, we believe that even putting fresh ingredients into existing feeding habits is way better than just their, their initial feeding habit. Um, we're thinking about uh, freeze-dried organ treat, not just as a treat, but also as a topper as well. Um, there's nothing there's nothing that dogs love to devour more than than, than organs, and um, so we're we're trying to diversify our products in a way that we can be uh, true to our mission about empowering wellness for dogs, um, and we want to do it so this is almost like democratizing wellness for dogs, so we can actually have every dog. Uh, be on a better track from a nutrition perspective. 
And you touched a little bit about um, the economic impact. Obviously, higher quality products are going to cost pet parents a little bit more money. Um, and for people that are concerned about that, I often have people say, can't I just feed my dog homemade food? Can I just feed him the meals that we're eating or some of the ingredients that I'm using or that kind of stuff? But um, as you mentioned, you did tons and tons, weeks and weeks and weeks of research before even thinking about uh, um, a diet like this for your pet. Um, there's a lot more to it than people realize. Can you talk a little bit about that and why it's really best to work either with an expert if you're going to create your own recipes or to go with a commercial product? Yeah, I, I mean, you, 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 it has to be, so this our whole idea, and there's others in the space, it has to be validate, validated by a professional, so a pet, a pet nutritionist who, who really understands uh, how ingredients can affect um, the overall health and wellness of a dog. Um, and this is, this is uh, you know, we, we live in a world where there, it seems like so many, there are so many dog lovers. And there's so many people who look at their dog as as a one of their children, and sometimes they're, they're loved more than their children. Um, but it's not easy. It's it, it's an education. We're super super patient, and and realize that everyone everyone lives uh, a, a very different life. Some we, we don't know um, the circumstances with every single customer and potential customer. So. If we want to be, and we're trying to be so, so patient in our journey, um, we want to make sure that the, that the educational piece is super clear, it's, under, it's understood, it's meaningful, uh, it helps someone take a nugget or two and think about um, nutrition in a little bit different way. And if it takes months or takes years, I think that's, that's totally fine and totally fair. Um, we have. Uh, we know that our approach is is is, uh, is is really smart. It's wildly beneficial for for the dog. Um, it will you know fresh ingredients uh, with no additives or preservatives. Uh, does amazing things to to the body from an energy perspective, from a from a quality of coat perspective. All these great thing attributes that you want your dog to have. Um, you know, a lot of it is pinned onto nutrition. So, but we know it's not something that is uh, that is going to happen. You know, tomorrow or the next day necessarily. It's going to take time. It's going to take um, a ton of patience, and it's going to take uh, just being really, really terrific at educating. And we're committed, totally committed to doing that. And speaking of educating pet owners, there's a, a lot of great information on your website and um, it talks about the ingredients that you use in your different recipes. How do you choose which ingredients to use, where they're sourced from, um, that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, there's, um, we spend a lot of time with um, our vet nutritionist about the ingredients and, and uh, she and her team basically kind of bucketed a lot of the ingredients into, you know, um, if you're thinking about proteins, like what what proteins uh, would would make a ton of sense? And you, you have like a, a ground turkey, or there's there's salmon, uh, there's chicken, there's there's beef, there's different proteins that make uh, that are obvious and make a ton of sense. And then we thought about what principle other ingredient principles could we use that could help um, drive wellness, whether it be anti cancerous kinds of uh, ingredients like a cauliflower or, or, or broccoli. Um, inflammation, uh, which obviously is the root of all uh, illnesses for, for anybody, uh, dogs or, or, uh, or human, um, which is why we think about fish oil and we think about turmeric uh, and flaxseed. And uh, we think about, uh, we're big believers in having grain because the, the benefits of, of having a, a complex carbohydrate in, in the recipe. Um, and uh, you know the benefits of, of apples and carrots. Uh, so we wanted to keep it really simple, but we tried to take uh, ingredients that uh, allowed us to, to have as as balanced approach, as simple as, of an approach, with no additives, no preservatives um, added whatsoever, and, and never have and never will. And where do you source your ingredients from? Um, 
today uh, we're, source, we're sourcing it in a few ways. We have uh, a wholesale um, vendor that we've been using. There's also, we're, we're based in Connecticut, so we have a, a wonderful uh, resource um, where restaurants actually buy their food called Restaurant Depot. So think think of think of um, think of Home Depot, but for for just um, <laughs> the food industry, and uh, you know this is where a lot of the the uh, tri-state restaurants will come and buy their ingredients um, from proteins to veggies and uh, everything's fresh. So we're we're uh, we're spending um, as much time as we can to make sure that we can bring as, as obviously fresh ingredients, but when we can bring organic ingredients as well. Um, it's it's harder from a, a protein perspective because you have uh, a lot of cost, but we are we're, our approach is to is to bring you know, the best ingredients, the freshest ingredients, and when we can uh, have organic uh, ingredients involved, we have a a really great local partner in Mike's Organic, um, where he has allowed us at times to um, to source some some proteins uh, that are. Uh, um, like we did a, a wonderful, a really fun promotion over Christmas where we had a filet um, uh, product. So you know, so we're like, if people are going to enjoy their their holiday or Christmas dinner uh, and have a, a wonderful you know filet, why can't your dog have the same kind of experience? So Mike's organic allowed us, uh, helped us source that product, so we could create a really fun um, product for for uh, for that holiday season. So uh, we are always thinking about ways. To, to you know, stay ahead of um, of of the food food trend and and take great pride in our approach to always bring the freshest ingredients to uh, to our customers. That is fantastic, Tom. Thank you so much for your time today. Is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know about your products? I think the only thing is check us out. We're we're so excited to be a part of every uh, pet owner's life and, and and more specifically every dog's life. And if, uh, if there's anything we can do, we are we are uh, thanks to Alexander Rogers. We are um, we love to connect with our customers. We love to get on the phone with them. We have to, to ask them uh, what their needs are, and we are a a, uh, a major resource. So uh, check us out. We'd love for you to uh, to be a part of our our journey, and we'd love to be a part of your your dog journey too. Fantastic. And again, you know, that link to your website is uh, going to be below the podcast for anybody that wants to check that out. There's some great information on there. And of course, information about getting uh, in touch with you. I think one of the biggest things I look for as a consumer, as a company that is interested in the consumers buying their products. So uh, that's always great for me to hear that the company is interested in talking to us as the consumers and, and wondering, you know, what our needs are and how they can meet that. So kudos to yeah. you for that. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's our greatest opportunity, honestly. If we can build a great relationship uh, with with people like you, Samantha, and our customers, that is, a, it's a gift. And it's why technology is, is, is such a, a, a favorable approach to what we're doing. Because we can build this incredible relationship and really understand what makes you tick. Tom, thank you so much for being here and, and sharing all of this great information. Um, if anybody is interested again in his website, you can click the link below the video. There's also a link below the video to our website, which is theoryofpets.com. While you're on there, you can leave any comments, questions, suggestions. If you have any suggestions for future topics, something you'd like to hear about, a question that you've really been wondering about, let me know. I would love to do some research, reach out to some experts in the field and get those questions answered for you guys. So be sure to leave those on there. And while you're there, if you can just leave a quick review for me on iTunes or uh, however you listen to the podcast, if you just leave a quick review, that really helps me when I'm reaching out to experts in the industry. I can show them that you guys are out there listening and you want to hear more. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back with another hot topic very soon.